from the backside of Katie Meyer. Now here's Courtney Banghart in her fifth season in charge at North Carolina. And we will get into a little bit more, but they are down two guards, Renaya Kelly and Kayla McPherson. Uh, McPherson hurt her knee. She's had trouble with it for the last few years. And Renaya Kelly is on crutches and unavailable as well. Miami in their mostly green uniform, starting things off. Three ball missed by Lattimore, rebound by Spearman. For this Miami team coming in as the ninth seed, an 8-9 matchup. Let's see Donofsky, their best perimeter defender, got on Gay Wilson, who found Spearman inside for the first basket Let's of the game. Spearman. Take a look at the starting five of Fort North Carolina. Lexi Donarski, the grad transfer from Iowa State. Anya Poole has been in the starting lineup for a while now, getting in there for Renaya Kelly and Maria Gakdang, who is a transfer from Boston College in her first year at North Carolina. Well, handling this pressure, the 1-3-1 with Lattimore and her length at the top is going to be key for Carolina. Can you get the ball to the corners? Can you t knock down those open shots? Jada Patrick called for the foul. This is her third school. ACC fans probably remember her for playing a couple of years at Duke. Then she went to Columbia, another smart school, and now is playing at Miami. Must be attacks to win. Take a look at the Miami starting five. Diane Day Wilson, a Duke transfer herself. Looks nice for Lattimore, like Day Wilson is from Toronto. Then you've got Patrick, a transfer, and Spearman, a true sophomore. First year starter for Katie Meyer. Back dang on the deck. As the ball goes out of bounds. D. Kantner, Eric Bruton, Karen Prieto are officials, good veteran crew here for our second of four games in this ACC tournament. Dave Wilson getting it over to Jasmine Roberts. Of course, Lexi Donarski has the check on Dave Wilson. One of the best defenders on her team and utilizing her length, but Jada Patrick on the Jada offensive glass for the Canes. Patrick had a career high 25 points at Miami last year playing for Columbia. <laughs> so if you can't beat him, join him. She is now a Miami Hurricane. Deja yeah. Kelly. Well, that's where the shots are going to come from against Deja. the 1-3-1. One, one. If you can get it to the deep corner, Deja Kelly able to knock that down. She only shoots at 28% from the three-point line, but she has the ability to get hot. Jay Wilson with the miss. Kelly, nobody else around the ball, gets the rebound. Kelly had 18 in the regular season win, 18 points in the regular season win against Miami. Eight of those points from the line. Gokdeng fouled by Lattimore. So good job. You see the trap coming in the 1-3-1. One, one. Get it to the elbow. Straight to the corner. That's where those shots are going to come from. And Deja Kelly knocks it down. Spearman called for the foul that sends Gokdeng to the line. A couple of years at Boston College. Made the all-freshman team. She has three double-doubles and has been starting all season long for Courtney Banghart. And both. North Carolina out to a 7-4 lead. in traffic, driving on pool and hits it. Lattimore has that 6-4 frame, but really can play like a guard. Her ability to stretch the floor from the three and attack off the bounce. And Lattimore has a big old brace on her right knee toward that ACL in December of her freshman year. Played the first nine games, healthy this year. Gokden gets inside. Who started her career at Texas and transferred in 
Now playing with her high school teammate in Day Wilson. That's a pretty good team. There in Toronto. Must be. Oh, she's so tough. Yeah, taking advantage of the mismatch. Oh, 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 her down low. Alyssa Usby, patient, poised inside. We had a double double and a regular season win against the Canes. Carolina coming off a big win against Duke. Day Wilson with some magic in the lane. She's so crafty. Well, she can get off the three point line as well, but does a great job of getting to the paint. Must be lost the ball momentarily, and then a couple of canes jump on it. Hell ball, possession, Carolina. Arrow keeps it with Carolina. Well, Carolina doing a good job of executing it's in their quarter court line. offense, you know, finding ways to attack the 1 3 1, going inside the Gokdane, one on one, recognizing the mismatch, and Utsby going to work, scoring over two defenders. First sub for Miami. Kyla Oldacre, a 6'6 sophomore from Mason, Ohio, comes in, number 44. Trying to neutralize Gokdang, who's hurt them a little bit. And now here's a foul as Donarski ends up on the court. There's a good look at Miami Kyla. Foul number 44, Kyla Oldacre, her first personal 13. Oldacre foul. called for a foul for soon Carolina after she checked in. Now Gokdang goes out for the heels. And Carolina's had to rely on this small lineup throughout the course of the season. They don't have a lot of depth at any position. No, they certainly do not. India Navarre, number 24, the Stanford transfer, checked in for Gokdeng. Rebound taken down by Patrick. Day Wilson behind the back. Jasmine Roberts, nope, rebound. Taken down by Poole. And then Kelly with the nice floater Asia off glass. Asia's got five. She was eighth in the ACC in scoring this year, averaging just under 17 points per game to lead her team again. Five. A. Wilson hounded out there by Donarski, who's an elite defender out on the perimeter. Was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year back when she was with Ohio or Iowa State, pardon me. And that takes us to our first break. Carolina up five. Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Jersey night, she wore a jersey with the number 204. That is a combined number of all of her players' numbers. She had eight newcomers, seven players that welcomed them in. She said that was the most important thing with this group. They are down so much talent, but the fact that they have a rotation of players that are invested with one another, invested in the buy-in for the program, she says that's why they're finding success this year. And I think it starts with your leadership, and that's Deja Kelly and Alyssa Utsby. They have been here. They've been an integral part of, of the program for Courtney Banghart their entire careers. And to, to welcome everyone, to know what it's going to take for them to be successful and to lead by example is critical. Yes, they are both seniors. Shot buried from the outside by Donarski. And that's what she does. you got to find Lexi Donarski on the three-point line. Donarski. Her first year, first and last year with North Carolina. Old Acre gets the basket. Put the lead back to six points. Kelly working the baseline, threw it away, excuse me, Navar, and then committed the foul. Ball movement is so key, and Lexi Donarski runs a little get action where she passes it to the post and comes back to get it. And Jasmine Roberts just rested and relaxed. You can't relax when you're guarding Lexi Donarski. And, and you mentioned 
the defensive acumen of, of Lexi Donarski, but by far, I think, is one of the best in-shape athletes I've ever seen from her time at Iowa State to, to her time in North Carolina. She is constantly on the go and never seems to get tired. Old Acres with a big turn. Got it blocked by Poole, who unfortunately for her was hanging on to the basketball. So it stays with Miami. Day Wilson will inbound. Carolina off to a hot start. They've hit six of their first eight shots. Entry pass into Old Acre wasn't handled cleanly. Second turnover. Deja Kelly picks it up. Must be calling for it as she goes down the lane, and that's a foul on Miami. And Angel talked about how connected this North Carolina team is, and certainly Kelly and Usby personify that, playing together for four years. Most well, does a great job of rim running, miscommunication in transition on the defensive end of the floor by Miami. Sharia Williams' first foul, fourth team foul against Miami. That's a travel. Scott then fell down. And must be goes over there to help her up. Third turnover for the Heels. Coming off a win at home against Duke after they had dropped back to back games at Virginia Tech and at Austin College. DC gave Louisville all they could handle today before falling in our first game. With the miss, here's Kelly taking it right to Day Wilson. Perhaps hoping to draw a foul. And Haynes, who liked to run the floor. That's a travel as Dwyer went up and came down with it. Good defense by Gokdang to get back. I thought it was deflected out of Jaleel Williams' hands. Bruton and D. Kantner talk about it. And they have indeed reversed it. Miami 24 seconds to shoot when they inbound. Carolina places 2 3 zone out of bounds. Miami's got to find a way to get Day Wilson free. Narski reached in. Foul not on her, however, Pierce. Nia Navarre picks up a couple after coming in off the bench. And Cheyenne Day Wilson really made a splash as a freshman when she was at Duke. Led them in scoring and assists as a freshman. Played one more year and then transferred to Miami. Now it's North Carolina basketball. Espy using her arm to get some separation from Patrick. Turnaround shot. Terry Wilson watches her teammate. Patrick hold on to it. Entry for the Hurricanes, number 32, Lazaria Spearman. Lazaria Spearman back into the game. Also entering for Miami, number four, Jasmine Roberts. Jasmine Roberts checks back in for Patrick. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Dwyer had to elevate because Gokding was there. Got her own rebound. Deja Kelly fell, but appears to be okay. Nice pass. Cashed in. 
Yeah, Dwyer, Dwyer can get those big sparks off the bench. On both ends of the floor, she can set the tone, but that was a terrific individual effort to get her the shot by Day Wilson. And Spearman got her hands on Gokdang. I mean, Day Wilson has the ability to get to the rim, and she's improved every year in terms of her decision-making once she does. And plays off of two feet. Finds her open teammate, and that's a strong finish by Dwyer. Dwyer, one of four Canadians on this Miami team. Third of their team coming from the north of the border, all of them from the Toronto area. Summer is more palatable down there. Octang at the line. You've got your Canadian ties, so. Yes, Toronto. Thing. Just about missed everything there. She is just 62% from the line on the season. Carolina's gone almost three minutes without a point, but they still lead by four. Lattimore looking for some help. Defense! Wilson. Defense! Wide right. Asia Kelly always gets the ball like she shot out of a cannon as she heads up court. Talk about somebody who's in great shape. She's yeah. played all 40 minutes for the last or five of the last six games. Narski finishing off the bounce. One minute to go in the first. Inside foul. And Dwyer got it inside to Lattimore. Well, Lexi Donarski is a three-point shooter, but she can also attack off the rim. That quick first step. She does a good job of getting her defender behind her. Goes glass. Gokdang called for the foul. And sends Lattimore to the line. <laughs> Top ranked Canadian recruit coming out in 2021. Like her other teammates has gotten some great experience on some national teams. Canada qualifying for the Olympics, both men and women, for the first time in a long time. Donarski zips it over to pool. And that's big time for you, because if you're Miami, that's the one you're taking the chance with, knocking down a shot from 17 feet, and Anya Poole steps up and knocks it down. Poole's not a big-time scorer, averaging just about three points a game. You couldn't tell by the way she caught no. that one. Yeah, that, that looked mighty true. With no hesitation. Flyer tried to ball fake Kelly, and then dribbled into trouble. Miami needs to get a shot off. They do. Williams missed everything. Good defensive sequence there for the heels. Kelly bothered just enough After one quarter, your score by Dwyer that she couldn't get a shot off. Well, Deja Kelly does what she does best. She gets to that mid-range. Little float game off the glass, and Lexi Donarski attacking the paint as well. Carolina, 2013. See them starting tomorrow at 11 a.m. when Notre Dame will take on Louisville. And according to Charlie Cream, this is the bracketology. Virginia Tech, NC State, Notre Dame all hosting right now. Of course, a lot to be determined in the conference tournaments. He has Miami as a 10, the ninth and final team that he has in. The top four seeds get that double bye. No team has won this ACC tournament under this current format without getting a double bye. Because even with the double bye, you have to win three games right. in three days. Is, yes. No team even that has had to play four games in four days. Miami got to the championship game a couple of years ago but fell. 
Nice way to attack the basket Roberts. for Jasmine Roberts, junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Miami is always one of those scary teams because they, they muck it up on the defensive end of the floor. You know, they, they certainly can have the ability to turn you over and get some quick scores in a hurry. They can get hot from the field. Zanarski gets the screen from Gokdang. They're now on the switch, guarded by Lattimore, but Eric Bruton has a call away from the ball. Let's go over now to Angel Gray, who has more on the Hurricanes. Ladies and Stephanie, I feel like you would appreciate this too. There's nothing I love more than a huddle that is led by players in the huddle. Jalea Williams was telling her teammates, we've seen our mistakes, now let's fix them. She said, listen, Miami is a defensive team. Do not forget our strengths. Everybody smile. This is how she finished it. Everyone smile. It's a basketball game. You make mistakes, now let's fix them, play together. Reminder, in the, the first matchup that they had with North Carolina, they shot 20% from the field. They erupted in the second and hit five threes. We'll see if they can do it this time. That's a great message, and you're absolutely right. I mean, the player-led huddles are the best ones. When it comes from your peers, it certainly means a little bit more. Jalea Williams has been a player who has been in it with this Carolina team and program and understands what it takes. But getting back to what you do best, locking in on the defensive end of the floor, it's a game of runs. Both of these teams, at times, struggle on the offensive end of the floor. So you're never out of a ball game as long as you continue to fight and put yourself in position on D. Good look at Williams, a junior from Pompano Beach, Florida. Donarski with the miss, but right underneath, Gokdang has been active. She drew the foul. We see Donarski has a lot of time and space, and Gokdang does a great job of crashing the offensive glass. Lattimore gets her with the body. Gokdang. Two of four from the line so far in this game. These two teams did play once in the regular season, and Angel referenced it. Carolina got out of the gates very quickly. They led 22 to eight after the first quarter. But then Miami started hitting their threes, and they ultimately ended up only losing by five. Miami, 14 of 15 points in the paint, which means their other point came from the free throw line. Well, they had that advantage in the last matchup as well, 34 to 22 in the paint. Right. Miami has seven baskets from seven different players. Usby just committed her first foul. I think that's the other piece for Miami. They have a deeper bench. You know, the, the ability throughout the course of 40 minutes and to try to, to wear down Carolina, not just in terms of, of physicality, but efficiency. Lattimore just got blocked by Gokdang, who averages a block and a half per game. That's a good D by Gokdang. Lattimore about an inch taller than Gokdang. 6'4 to 6'3. Off the inbounds, Roberts has it rim out. And then another foul, Dwyer upset. That's her second. And now Day Wilson will come in for Dwyer. That was a missed opportunity right there. And Dwyer just comes in and, I mean, that, that, that's a no-brainer right there. Yeah, that was a, that was a foul. <laughs> Deja Kelly working now against Day Wilson. Usby posting up strongly. And a good recovery. That's a really nice catch by Anya Poole. Anya Poole. Great look by Usby. Biggest lead of the game is nine. Here comes Donarski. Kelly doing a really good job on the boards. Usby left that jumper short. Didn't take a lot of outside shots, Alyssa Usby. Donarski picks it up, doesn't have numbers, but she's got Kelly over on the right wing. 
Dave Wilson says, I found her. Miami foul number 30, Cheyenne Dave Wilson, her second personal, fifth team foul. Melissa Osby right here draws a triple team and is able to find her teammate in Anya Poole, who gets the two. And, and you know, Courtney Reinhardt has changed up who that star, uh, additional starter is in the absence of Renaya Kelly, who, who's out and not playing right now because of injury. Sometimes it's been Anya Poole, sometimes it's been Alexandra Zelaya. You know, based on matchups and matchup driven, and Anya Poole has been big early in this game. Tavarski at the line, Big 12 Freshman of the Year, the Defensive Player of the Year as a sophomore, and had to take a whole lot of summer mm -hmm. school classes in order to be eligible to come over as a grad transfer. Was able to get some USA three-on-three -three experience, so she, because of that little loophole, was able to practice with North Carolina, be with her teammates over the summer. Just a hard-nosed kid from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Ball bounces in for Patrick. Yeah, Miami finally gets one to fall. I mean, this is a team in the Hurricanes that shoots it almost 44% from the floor and have struggled here this afternoon. Yeah, fifth best during the regular season in the league, but sitting at 32% so far in this one. Kelly left open. She usually makes you pay in that situation. And there's Alyssa Lesby being facilitator again. Gets the ball, makes the right reads. Espy is certainly one of Courtney Banghart's favorites. Has been since she was a freshman. Came in with a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, was not highly ranked. But came in and has really shown her value for four years. Oh, Dee Kantner taken down. You think that's an offensive foul? Can, can she call two? Actually, that's Karen Pareto, uh, excuse me, as she hit the deck. You don't expect the uh, the contact coming right there with the officials. I think she had position right there. Yes, Jaleel Williams certainly oh. charged into her. Uh, Karen's okay. I wonder if we polled the officials. Um, how many times has, has have they had a close encounter like that? Yeah, I, that's because I've not seen it. I've not seen not like that. I've seen them get clipped a little bit, but mm -hmm. that was that was full on. Foul was called on Pool for Carolina, her first. Incidental contact, I guess, with the Jalea Williams contact with the official. Donarski, Usby, bottled up, and was able to somehow slice her way through it. And Katie Meyer calls a timeout. She has a big question. I think she thought that was a travel, but North Carolina now with a big lead. Well, let's be, knows the double team is coming. She's checking for it. It doesn't come fast enough. And she's able to split the two of them. She, knee surgery. Renaya Kelly next to her in the black. She is out with a lower body injury. And that doesn't even count for Paulina Paris, another guard who has not played since February 14th. And you think about the, the schedule that Courtney Banghart and her staff put together, a challenging schedule to say the least, particularly in the non-conference and then leading into a strong ACC conference slate under the assumption that they're going to have their bodies, and, and they have not for most of the year. We talked about all the big-time minutes. Deja Kelly averaging 36 minutes per game, so many 40-minute games. And there's Deja with the basketball. There's nothing coming easy for the Canes on the offensive end. They're going to have to try to find some offense from their defense, force some turnovers, get active on the defensive end. They just have two field goals in this quarter, five personal fouls that has put Carolina in the bonus already. Whistle away from the action. Okay, Wilson and Donarski tied up a little bit. Maria Gockton. They did with uh, Sheen Oldacre also. A little bit of a tussle. That's the second one on Gockton. Courtney Banghart just saying about how often just having to play guards out of position because she just doesn't have any depth. 
Not using it really as an excuse, certainly, but they have really been hard hit. And Renai Kelly and Kayla McPherson, very talented. Pauline Paris have been a starter. Deja with the miss. Williams lost her dribble. Donarski thought about gambling for the ball, but instead chose to stay with Day Wilson. Alexi Donarski has done such a good job on Day Wilson. She uses her lane. She forces her to do just that. Miami has yet to hit a three on this game. Shot clock winding down. Day Wilson covered a lot of real estate. Finally, Miami gets its first three of the game. It's Williams. Just her 15th three of the game. This is her 29th game of the season. Must be gets the handoff from Donarski. Pool left open momentarily. Uspi lobs it into Gokdang, back out to Uspi. Donarski, good look at the three. But it just spun out. Patrick had to get it off quickly because Pool was closing. Good old, good old fashioned low post battle, battle yes. down there, yeah? Nice move. Wow, Deja with the step through, but couldn't get it to go. Jasmine Roberts hands it over to Williams. Another three. Old Acre and Gokting again. And they call it on Old Acre. Is two on her. You see the hook right there by Old Acre coming up underneath Gokdang. Level of physicality between those two has been legit. Yes. And remember, North Carolina is in the bonus. Old Acre goes to the bench with two fouls. And Gokdang heads to the free throw line. Looks like she will be subbed out for. Alexandra Zelaya, who will come in for the first time in this game. And Zelaya gives North Carolina a different look. She's going to be playing that post position, but she's a stretch. Yes. So she's going to be on the perimeter. But right now, this, this game just doesn't have any kind of feel or any kind of rhythm. And you know, neither team able to get it going offensively. Carolina's been able to chip away, extend this lead. Locked in one out of two. Yeah, Carolina's gone over three minutes without a field goal, yet still lead by a dozen. As Miami's offense not clicking, they're only 25% from the floor. Another three ball. Just missed for Williams. Must be. Oh, lost it. And it ended up with Poole. Anya Poole has given them some great minutes in this game. Six points, three rebounds, and three assists for the senior from Raleigh. Dave Wilson is just not able to get any daylight. How about that one? Rolls it in off glass. Wilson now with five, leading scorer on this team, but averaging just 12 points per game. Miami third from the bottom in scoring in the ACC this season. Kelly, she did not get a good roll. Williams hesitated and shuffled her feet. Just the fourth turnover for Miami. And Jay Wilson, she's able to get just a little bit of space. Lexi Donarski has been glued to her. She gets the friendly bounce. Slight delay for a Robert to had to tie her sneaker. So Zelaya is in for Carolina along with Tiani Key, number 13. 
Deja Kelly, just three for 10 from the floor, but she has eight rebounds. Lead both sides. Ooh, missed, missed Usby on the cut. Usby fires away, short. Oh, that's a kick. Kelly was trying to go for the ball. And instead, Deja is called for her first personal foul. Nothing but net with us all weekend. There's Muffet McGraw with her signature scarf. Of course, Ivory's dancing and Justin Walters. Happy to have him along with us here in Greensboro. Yeah, there he is. Hey, Ivory would be dancing a little more if, if we started seeing some mate buckets over <laughs> yeah, here. I'm yeah. telling you, we need some mate she's, buckets. She's about to come out and jack up uh, a couple. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> nice catch by Lattimore, then turns and hits it. There we go. There we go. Some of the flash that we've expected from Lattimore heralded recruit when she first went to Texas. And Lattimore, one of those players that's been hampered by injury throughout her career. And Deja Kelly attacking the paint. Finishing with her left hand as well. And Williams takes the chance. And that puts your team under duress if you don't get it, if you're not staying in good position. And Stedman just laid on the rotation. It wasn't even really her rotation. Stedman just coming into the game doesn't get a lot of time for this team. A transfer from Pepperdine. So she went from Malibu to Miami. Originally from Phoenix. It's a lot of sunshine in her life. <laughs> Nothing wrong with some vitamin D, no. man. Good for the soul. That's defense by Key. A little bit too much body, so Tiani picks up the foul. Missed some time at the beginning of the season with a lower body injury herself. Jasmine Roberts heads to the free throw line. Miami's only taken two free throws so far in this game. comes in, Dave Wilson heads to the bench because she has two fouls. Smart sub by Katie Meyer, who's a terrific player at Duke. So a great student athlete. We need a stop here, shot clock's off. Carolina's gonna try to get the last points of the half. SB turns, yep. So five and a half seconds left after the fifth turnover for the Heels. Day Wilson comes back in. Trying to see if she could get a shot off. Roberts with the inbound, Usby and Donarski playing defense. The Heat goes in! What a way to end the half. Jaleel Williams with a desperation shot to give Miami some momentum heading into the locker room. How about that? Miami had no momentum at all the first half and the desperation heave after nearly falling down by Jaleel Williams. And then we had a celebration on the sideline but maybe this is the shot in the arm that the Hurricanes need. Yeah, Donarski and us, we get to hear from Angel Gray now. Hey, ladies, what Coach Meyer was talking about, hey, we're good, we're focused coming into the second half, she said, but what we can clean up is that we need to stop fouling. She was not pleased with how they were committing fouls 30 feet away from the basket. She said, we put them in a bonus, they had eight points while they were in the bonus. We have to play smart, but they're fighting, and she's pleased. 
North Carolina threw 12 fouls in that first half. Half of them were on Gokdang. As in, she was fouled. Lattimore starts things off with style. Miami's hit four straight shots, including two straight threes, heading back to the second quarter. Well, that's a good sign for the Hurricanes. Now, they're a team, again, that can, can struggle and go through some, some lulls offensively, but Lexi Donarski has the answer. Yeah, Donarski, you already mentioned how she never seems to be tired, and also someone with a very even personality. Yeah, she sure is. She's got intensity but her facial expression doesn't change. Offensive foul. Foul on. This is what we've been looking for, Pam. See the ball go through the net. Lattimore knocks down the three, and on the other end, Lexi Donarski has the answer. Leads this team with threes, averaging about two and a half per game. Jada Patrick called for the foul on the other end for Miami. When she was picked up by her teammate, I saw she said, what, how was that a foul? Well, it was a foul. According to the officials, Kelly blocked nicely by Roberts. And it went off of Carolina, so it's Miami's ball. So Roberts had to check Alexi Donarski in the first half, and Deja Kelly here early in the second. That's a header. It's wrong sport. Yes, yeah. yes. So it goes over to the Hurricanes. Number nine seed in this tournament. More contact underneath. And Karen Priado, by the way, we just talked to her. She's okay. She took a, a, a tough spill. Jalea Williams, right? It was the one who ran into her, bowled her over. I believe it was, yes. And uh, she said she, the entire right side hurts a little bit. The whistle caught her in the lip, but she's all right. She plays on. Cool committed a foul, and that spent, sends Spearman to the line. Sophomore from Georgia wearing the protective mask. Gets them both. And now some pressure from Miami, and Usby, among her many talents, is trusted to bring the ball up on several occasions. Even more so with all the guard injuries. Carolina is led by as many as 14 in this game. Usby daring her to shoot. Shot clock is dying. Good defensive possession for Miami. Kept Carolina out of the paint, did a good job with their activity level, and that's what they have the ability to do. They can give you a lot of different looks, they can turn it up on the defensive end. Now they've got to try to create some offense from that defense, get a little bit of pace in this game. into single digits now for Day Wilson. Roberts taking it right to Usby, who comes away with the rebound. Kelly elevates. Had a good look at it, but couldn't get it to go. Deja has missed eight of her 12 shots today. Look at nine of 13 with that last miss. Lattimore has hit from out there already in this half, did not take the shot. Instead, it's Patrick in the corner who misses. Kelly. Usby, a little off balance. More bodies hit the floor. And Kelly this time. Carolina Falls, 25, Deja Kelly, your second personal. It's called on Deja Kelly. That is two on her. 
for the 24 Indiana Bar returns. Well, this is kind of right up Miami's alley, you think, what we're seeing here. Miami a, ball. a lot of bodies hitting the floor, kind of mucking things up a little bit. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's a team that, that can make it ugly, certainly, but it's also a team that, that kind of ebbs and flows when it comes to offense and what they can give you on the offensive end. You know, it's, you put so much pressure on your defense when you struggle to score and not getting turnovers for scores. Oh, it makes it really, really tough for the Hurricanes. And, and for Carolina, it's the, you know, they, they've had to scratch and claw all season long, so this is not anything that's any different you know, for them, they have the ability to score in bunches, but they've got a lot of players that are logging a lot of minutes. Well, the whistles keep on coming. Gokteng just picked up her third foul, and now here's another one on Kelly. That, all right, so this is where it can get really dodgy for them. Lack of depth, both Gokteng and Deja Kelly have three personal fouls. Well, they also have the ability to change up their defenses. They can go to zone and try to protect those guys you know, from, from foul trouble, but they're also veterans. Deja Kelly's a veteran. She understands how to play without fouling. Got her hands out of there quickly. Spearman fumbled it just a little. A lot of more over Usby. In and out. Rebound. Bounces out to Donarski. Navarre got bottled up in the paint. Eight seconds to shoot for Miami. For Carolina, so Kelly heads to the Barker. bench. Sydney Barker comes in. She is a former walk-on who was actually awarded a scholarship not too long ago during the season. Usby will be taking some free throws. Barker playing with the mask herself. Lattimore has picked up her second foul for Miami. Number one, Alyssa Usby on the line from Carolina, shooting two. Here's Usby at the line for the first time this afternoon. Broke her nose in the loss at Boston College, second to the last game of the regular season. They lost that game. That broke BC's 10-game losing streak. But then the bounce back win against Duke last Sunday. Lattimore just wouldn't go in, but she stuck with it and got fouled on the follow. And if that's got thing. Carolina that could be number four. Maria Gopte, number fourth, it is her fourth foul. And good drop off pass by Williams. Way to stay patient. Lattimore doesn't get the first one to go, but stays active on the offensive glass. So four on Gopte. She goes to the bench. Zelaya comes back in. And Lattimore heads to the free throw line. 69% on the season from there. She's one of two today. Deja Kelly also on the bench. You don't see her on the bench very often. Attaboy. One of two on that trip. Zelaya and the former walk-on Barker on the floor. Two reserves for Coach Banghart. Usby, one of the rare outside shots, gets into double figures. And North Carolina likes to run that action where they get the ball to her on the elbow, and that time she just sized up the defender and took the jumper. Really good stuff on the baseline by Williams. Williams. That's what Miami needs to do. Pick it up a little bit in terms of pace on the offensive end of the floor. Barker with the miss. Opportunities now to, to run. 
Jay Wilson goes full speed ahead and gets knocked down. We will take a timeout. North Carolina up six. Melissa Husby in the elbow. ISO. Hand down, man down. She's going to let it go. And then on the other end, terrific attack by Jalea Williams. Gets an easy two. We're back in Greensboro. The winner of this game between North Carolina and Miami will play Virginia Tech tomorrow. And there are the Hokies in the stands far left. Georgia Amor, we've been dancing along to the music. And one of the most important people, certainly the most important for Virginia Tech, three-time ACC Player of the Year, Liz Kitley, is there. Her sister Raven in front of her. Kitley did not participate in practice today, and there has been no update on her status from Virginia Tech, who got hurt in the last regular season game, which unfortunately was sort of a pattern yes. this year around the country. It was. Kenzie Holmes at Indiana, Molly Davis at Iowa. Day Wilson at the line. Let's head over to Angel Gray. I note that you were able to see Elizabeth Kitley, and she's a huge story coming into the tournament, of course, three-time ACC Player of the Year. But I think the bigger star is actually her sister, Raven. Been with her and was a big part of the recruiting process. Actually, that's the reason that they chose Virginia Tech, because they were just so hands-on with her experience there. So it's really special to see how her sister, Raven, we'll get more into her story tomorrow as well, has been a big part of this journey and side-by-side -side with her this entire time. It absolutely is. You can see the bond with those two and an incredibly tight-knit family. See your parents at most every game. And the Kitley family bringing Georgia Amor in when she was unable to, to go home during COVID. Spearman with a nice finish. Makes it a two-point ball game. And Amor from Australia could literally could not go home during COVID and stayed with the Kitleys, and they are from this area. They're a Greensboro family. Kayla King, who was sitting next to Liz with the ball cap on backwards, was her AAU and high school teammate. So a nice long history. Jasmine Roberts just committed a foul for Miami, and we will see Virginia Tech tomorrow for the winner of this game. That will be our second game of the day session. Hasn't been this close since it was 11 to 8 Carolina back in the first quarter. Zelaya, a little bit too long, but Usby was being held as she attempted to get a rebound. Spearman now has three fouls for Miami. Miami foul number 32, Lazaria Spearman, number third, 14 foul. Meyer goes to her bench. Spearman goes out. Dwyer comes in. They instantaneously gets smaller. Well, this is a lineup where when you've got Zelaya on the floor, it's a very perimeter heavy. That's what she does, pick and pops. And Zelaya has good size at 6'4", but she is by no means it's almost like she's allergic to the paint. She just stays out and <laughs> pops from out there. Carolina holds on to the ball. Well, this allows Miami to go with a smaller lineup as well. They can do some different things on the defensive end. With a little bit more versatility. So much of subbing is matchups, yes? So much of it's matchups, absolutely. Navarre got a little push in the back. Miami foul, number 12, By Jalea Williams, two on Jalea. And that is team foul number five coming later than it did certainly in the second quarter. But Katie Meyer told Angel Gray they had to stop fouling to keep Carolina out of the bonus. The and they will be in the bonus now for the next three and a half minutes. India Navarre, a kid from Apex, North Carolina, which is near Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. Also known as the triangle. You said that super fast. Yeah, it's a triangle. And she spent one year at Stanford, had been recruited by North Carolina, and was able to come back home for this, her sophomore year. Boy. A lane violation will give Navarre another chance. I think they called a foul. It looks like they called it on the Shea Dwyer. Neither one of these teams are great from the free throw line. Last and next to last in terms of free throw percentage. Carolina shooting two. 
And it looked like if they were going to call it, it was, should have been on Roberts. But instead, it's Dwyer. So Usby goes to the free throw line. It's this team in rebounds, assists, steals, double doubles. One to two from the line. Miami finally comes away with the ball about five seconds after the rebound. Day Wilson directing traffic, her team only down three. They trail by as many as 14. That was in the second quarter, that's tipped. So no backcourt violation, but Miami has to hurry. Williams takes it right to Usby, a little bit too strong off class. Carolina basketball. Terrific execution. Miami coming with the pressure. The one four high just could not get it to go in. Carolina Let's see the I mean, this is perfect execution. You get over the top, you take advantage when the defense falls asleep on the backdoor cut. Donarski just could not get it to fall. And then Donarski was called for the foul as she bumped into Day Wilson Number trying to get the rebound of her miss. That would have been one sweet assist for Usby. But instead, Day Wilson shoots free throws. Both teams now in the bonus. with the mismatched tennis shoes. She got blue on the right side, orange on the left. That's, you just, you take two pair and just, is that how it works, uh, sneaker there person? Are, there are some players who prefer to have one of each, certainly. But Day Wilson's a player, Pam, that, that really can light it up. And, and she can light it up in hurry. She had 18 the last time these two teams met, 27, a career high in their last regular season matchup against Georgia Tech. I think that the Hurricanes have to find a way to get her loose and to get her going. 21 of those 27 points against Georgia Tech in their regular season finale came in the first half. But you're right, she could explode at any moment. Zelaya from her favorite spot on the floor. Here comes Williams. Dwyer, Old Acre. No foul call, and the ball is off of Miami. Old Baker gets some advice from Day Williams, or Day Wilson, excuse me. Asia Kelly has not scored in the third quarter. Had 11 points in the first half. She has picked up another rebound, has nine. Must be, yep. That's, that's the second time Musby's had the ball with an opportunity in the ISO on the elbow and has walked with it. Just a sixth turnover for the Heels. Miami with a chance to take the lead. They have not led in this game. Since it was four to two. Day Wilson for the lead, just a little bit too strong, and Donarski cradles the rebound. Navar driving into the lane. Donarski mm. wants it. Both teams cold in this quarter. Carolina's only scored eight points, and they have missed seven straight shots, 12 of their last 13. Single digits on the shot clock. Day Wilson. 
And Donarski, there's a lot of contact. Donarski holding her face after the contact. Day Wilson looks to gather, and Donarski gets it on the follow through, but certainly was holding on to Day Wilson and got her on the arm on the way up. Second foul on Donarski. Day Wilson, five for five from the line so far. A couple of years at Duke where she was the ACC Freshman of the Year, led Duke in scoring and assists in that year. And this year, her first in Miami. Averaging 12 points a game and is 12th in the ACC in assists. One out of two on that trip, but it ties the game up. We're inside a minute in the third quarter. Deja Kelly finally gets her first points on the half. Tipped away by Kelly. 17 seconds to shoot. Lattimore comes back in. And Old Acre heads to the bench. Lattimore, who just came back into the game, more contact underneath, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Miami Jada Patrick. Five, Jada, Patrick Jada Patrick was looking to dive to the weak side block and ran into Zelaya in the process. Third foul on Patrick. I always think those are so hard when both, both players are trying to move to a spot. There wasn't a screen. The timing was just of such where they ran into each other. Deja gets it over to Usby who fumbled it. Time now for Miami. Day Wilson got hit by Zelaya. Carolina foul number zero. Alexandra Zelaya for first. Great job in transition. Cheyenne Day Wilson has been much more aggressive in this second half, Number giving herself opportunities at the foul line. And Miami. I think for Miami, when they, so much better when they can play with pace. And sometimes Cheyenne that's Day off the turnover to get out. And sometimes it's just off of a missed shot. Also it has been Miami. very tough going Number for them trying to execute Lawrence. in the quarter court. Yeah, you certainly could see the speed in that sequence mm -hmm. with both Williams and Day Wilson. Wilson has now missed a couple of free throws in a row, and we'll have to see, especially with the pace that Miami likes to play, if that might affect North Carolina in the fourth quarter with the short bench. Missed them both, but got her own miss rebound at the buzzer. After three quarters, Williams score, hit Carolina one please. at the end of. Deja Kelly doing her part for Carolina. And Julia Williams to beat the buzzer as the first half ended. North Carolina led by seven. Took a two-point lead now into the fourth quarter. Pam Ward, Stephanie White, and Angel Gray joining you from Greensboro, North Carolina. The winner gets top seed Virginia Tech tomorrow. And my favorite part of that was Julia Williams after she made the shot. She just runs right through Lazaria Spearman <laughs> like on her way to the locker room and then high steps over the top of her. Yeah, like she wasn't even there. Right. Earlier today, Louisville survived the scare by beating Boston College. They play Notre Dame tomorrow. Oh, Husky, tough on the block, Scott 13. Yeah, that was a great look by Gokdang, who's in, back in the game with four fouls. 
The double team came right away. She made the right read. And so here you see the change defensively by Carolina going to the 2-3 zone. Navarro tipped it. 11 seconds to shoot. Maria Gatang back into the ball game. She gets a touchdown low. The double team comes, but there's no rotation on the backside, and Usby gets an easy two. Wilson guarded by Donarski. Williams open for a moment, but then she fumbled the ball and then stumbled. Shot violation. Turnover number seven only for Miami. Navarre tried to get it into Gokdan, but Maria cut left when the ball was going right. It wasn't a great angle to make that that entry pass. You need to be across the midline of the floor or reverse the basketball. Passing across the lane into a post-entry pass isn't ideal. Hey, Wilson shooting over Usby and hits it! Certainly, North Carolina has to play some zone to try to protect Gokdang on the interior, but it does free up Cheyenne Day Wilson, who has had no breathing room with Lex Dugomarski checking it. How about Hidia Navarre with the answer? She shoots just 23% from the three-point line. Just her 16th three of the season. Answers Day Wilson's three to get the lead back up to four. There's a walk. I mean, great job by Day Wilson of just creating that space. Knocking down a three, we know she can get hot in a hurry, but the answer on the other end by Navarre, she just walks right into it. Usby gets around Lattimore and scores. <laughs> Like that, the lead is up to six. Both these teams projected by Charlie Cream to get into the NCAA tournament. He's got nine from this league getting in. Lattimore on the baseline, left it short. Now the ball is loose and goes to Donarski. Lexi got it blocked out on the perimeter by Jasmine Roberts. Now Miami on the move. You gotta find your shooters when you're in transition. Dave Wilson was open on the wing. You don't get too many of those opportunities. Dave Wilson, terrific pass into Spearman. Lazaria Spearman from Cheyenne Day Wilson. Fifth assist for Cheyenne Day Wilson. Cuts the lead to four. Couple of close ones here in the afternoon session. Good work inside by Spearman. Rockdang left open after Spearman fell. And then the foul. Cheyenne Day Wilson again attacking the defense. Forces the rotation. Nice drop off to Spearman for the easy two. And this is what Day Wilson has, has been able to do in an area that she's continued to grow throughout her career. Well, she can be a dominant scorer, but she also has the ability to break down the defense. And decision making on the interior has continued to grow. As you see, some foul trouble, including Williams, her third personal. Foul trouble for Miami. Gokdang has been playing with four fouls. 
Got 102 at the line. Stands the lead to five. I don't want a movement there. I see. Oh, people I'm can't trying, see. I know. I'm trying to get him to go. Coach White is gesturing to them to speed it up. Instead, Deja Kelly on the breakaway. Can't get it. The bar good hustle to follow. And now Miami tries to get it going. Usby goes down. They call a foul. A charge on Roberts. Miami Bond on the floor, Janice Roberts, second personal, second team. Is that an I don't know about that? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's one of those, oh, that's an over back. It's just one of those situations where you know, Usby was still moving laterally. Now, you can technically still be moving and still be beat somebody to the spot. Deja Kelly called for the backcourt violation. Good defense by Miami. Only Duke gives up fewer points per game than Miami on average in the ACC this year. So not surprising that we have this low scoring game. I think we're also 13th in the league in scoring the basketball themselves. That's so find, yeah, finding ways to get some, I mean, and it's always catch and hold. Catch and hold, the ball's not moving. There's no player movement. Word, three from Williams. She's into double figures now, cuts the lead to just two. Usby. Not a shot you usually see her take. Dockton gets it over to Navarre. Oh, North Carolina's missed some shots in the paint the last minute or so. Miami with a chance to tie or take the lead. Getting away from the basket, and we are tied Spearman. up. Spearman with the putback. North Carolina had led by as many as 14 points in this game, and it's all knotted up. And Daisy Kelly still with just one bucket in the second half. Hasn't been able to get free. Another foul called on Miami. 4.07 left to go, we're all tied. Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an ally. I said, listen, we got timeouts. We'll use that as we go, something to pay attention to. Yeah, you certainly would be able, like to be able to use your timeouts to rest your players as opposed to having to use them you know, for, for other situations, runs or, but you also, you gotta be smart about saving them for end of game. It's a tight ball game. Carolina's now missed six straight shots. Gokdang out there playing with four fouls. Shot clock into single digits now for Miami and Spearman couldn't handle the pass cleanly. Empty possession for the Hurricanes. North Carolina has gone three minutes without a point, as Angel indicated in her report. They really have had chances yeah. in the paint with some shots and have not been able to cash in. That is a foul. It's a tough thing about trying to trap on the inbound Miami pass when you've got Alyssa Usby taking it out. So you just give it right back to her, and she brings it up the floor. For that is her fourth, team's fourth. So the next one puts North Carolina on the line. Carolina has not fouled in this quarter.
Deja from the free throw line, short ball bounces around, and Osby just ripped it away from Dwyer. That's a perfect example of an Alyssa Usby type of play, saving the possession for a team. Deja Kelly has not been able to get loose here in this second half. Navar with the rainbow three. To get it off, the clock expiring. Good defense by Carolina just to get down there and cover some ground, but then another foul is committed. Navar now has three fouls. Carolina foul number 24. So Zelaya comes in for Gokdang. North Carolina with no bench points today. SP shooter got in front of Lattimore. They found the shooter for you, Steph, but you missed. Man, it wasn't a clean look, but good job. Spearman's been active on the offensive glass. You don't get a lot of time against good defensive teams to get shots off. So it's so important to have their pass on time and on target. Another miss in the paint, this time by Kelly in the tie up with Usby with Lattimore, but the ball stays with Miami. The Hurricanes lead for the first time since it was four to two. They trailed by 14 in the second quarter. This is a seven nothing run. And they've done a good job on the defensive end. Certainly, North Carolina has missed some easy opportunities. And it seems to me when Miami gets a little bit of pace in what they're doing, even in the half court, right? Pace with cuts, pace with ball movements. They're getting some more opportunities, but they haven't done that consistently throughout the course of the game. Carolina's missed nine straight shots. They haven't scored now in over four minutes. This is an 8-9 matchup. Carolina, the eighth seed. Roberts elevates over Usby. Rebound for a Spearman. Does it again. But check that, that's Lattimore, who was able to get the rebound and got fouled. She's freed up for the offensive rebound because of two Touches in the paint by dribble drives. First it was Lachey Dwyer. She had the first one. Then you attack a closeout on the backside with Roberts on the second one, and it forces defense to be in rotation. And that freed up Lattimore to get to the offensive glass. And Miami. Official side has scored 11 straight points in this game. The last play is under review to see if there's anything. We haven't had some. Okay. Let's see if there's anything uh, unnecessary after the whistle. But well, they're gonna look to see if there was any unnecessary roughness in that last play, timeout. All right, so after the official review, Lazaria Spearman, is going to be issued an unsportsmanlike intentional foul. Right here, you're gonna see Spearman. Her teammate gets the end one, Lattimore gets the end one, and she comes back into the play and just unnecessary contact with Anya Poole, so. After review. Well, Decan, they just tricked us. She's not, yeah. she's not coming in to, to tell us. So. After review, number 32 Green is assessed an intentional foul for making unnecessary contact with the opponent. Carolina will be awarded two free throws plus possession at midcourt. So, Latasha Lattimore will get her free throw for the and one opportunity, and then Carolina will get two free throws and the ball. And this is a big play. And when it comes to composure and maintaining composure, well, you're ahead in this ball game in the last two minutes. So important to maintain composure and not allow momentum shifts because of plays like that.
three-point play for Lattimore. You give Carolina and Lexi Donarski an outstanding free throw shooter, so they get to pick anyone, an opportunity Lexi to score Donarski with no time running off the clock, and then another possession. Right, so instead of having this nice five-point lead with just over two minutes left, Carolina getting the ball. Donarski gets them both. This could become an effect of four or a five-point play or five-point possession for Carolina that could tie the game up. Carolina with just 20 points here in the second half. But down by three. Winner gets top seed Virginia Tech tomorrow afternoon. Deja Kelly finishes. First time she scored in a while. Well, it's about Deja Kelly time, right? The yep. opportunity to take over at the end of a ball game. Kelly with 15 points, 11 of them came in the first half. Miami with the one point lead inside to Spearman who got stopped. Big play by Anya Poole. Don't get, don't get Deja Kelly an on ball screen. Uspie dribbles out of trouble. Kelly up and under, but hit the bottom of the backboard. One minute to go. Miami with the ball, a one-point lead. It's got to be solid defensively if you're North Carolina. Courtney Banghart has plenty of timeouts. One is taken here by Katie Meyer. We will take a 30-second break. Uh -huh. and then now, this is the same Miami team that beat NC State earlier at ACC play. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. North Carolina has only committed two no, fouls in this quarter. And this is just being smart defensively, playing good contained defense, force a tough contested shot and finish the play. Pressure out on the ball on Williams. Dave Wilson blows by Donarski, but then Alyssa Usby came over to help out. And a foul has been called on Donarski. That is three on Lexi. Well, Donarski looking to, looks like she was trying to take a foul before the gather. So did a good job of not fouling on the shot. She knew she was beat. That was a smart play. We've had 42 made field goals in this game and 44 fouls called. Timeout by Amy. Timeout taken by Miami. Here's, here's the thing about taking Three, fouls, though. Seven, You're going to try to take fouls intentionally. You want to do that early in the shot clock, right? Because it resets at, at 20. So Lexi Donarski knew she was beat. She knew they had fouls to give. So timing is important. You're still in a position, if you're North Carolina, where you don't have to foul. Right? You just play good defense, but you have to finish the play. You use timeouts to advance the basketball. Courtney Banghart's talking about that right now. If you're Miami, you've been at your best when you've got the ball moving side to side. You've attacked and then you sprayed out for shots. So you want to put pressure on the defense by attacking the rim, but then you got to make the right play. North Carolina now with just three fouls. So they do have a foul to give. Miami, an incredibly important possession right now. Winner gets Virginia Tech. And they still have one timeout if they have trouble getting the ball inbounds. Day Wilson just got it out to Williams. And I like this. Make Day Wilson get rid of the basketball, but then you've got to get back in the play. Travel. That is a big, big turnover. Zadarski and Poole coming out with that defense near midcourt. I mean, this is just a great job. Williams wasn't clear with where she wanted to go. Yep. Courtney Banghart using a timeout. 
in the house. Blue Devils about to take on Georgia Tech. And then follow that with Florida State and Wake Forest. All coming up on the ACC Network. Four more games tomorrow for the quarterfinals. And here we go. Deja Kelly with the ball in her hands. Oh. Tried to get it inside to Gokding, but they threw it away. And a timeout taken right away by Miami. That was the signal anyway. And it looked like Usby was trying to foul. But Lexi Donarski, that play was out. Miami, that magical Elite Eight run last year, but a lot of new faces this season. Trying to come up with the upset win. Ball will be inbounded opposite us by Cheyenne Day Wilson, the smallest player. We've got Doc Dang not right on the ball. Now she moves up. Smallest player, but potentially best decision maker. Gets it into Spearman, right back to Day Wilson. But not before a foul was called, with just under 15 seconds left to go. And Gokdang has now fouled out. Gokdang, eight points, four rebounds today. And that's exactly who you want to foul if you're North Carolina. Spearman, 44% from the free throw line. Yeah, they got to her quickly because she was about to throw it to Day Wilson, who was one of their best free throw shooters. And North Carolina still with timeouts. So again, most important thing is rebound the basketball. Rebound, box out, you've got timeouts, whether it's a make or a miss. She missed them both, Donarski gets the rebound and immediately calls a timeout. So North Carolina has another chance down one. There's plenty of time left to go. Spearman unable to deliver at the free throw line. We've had a lot of, seems like everything in this game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a missed opportunity certainly right there for Spearman and for Miami. But again, you've got new life if you're North Carolina. And execution out of a timeout. Courtney Banghart's gonna be clear about what she wants. She's gonna want to attack the rim. Still have a timeout left if they can't get it in bounds for some reason or another. But you've got to put pressure on this Miami defense to attack off the bounce. Plenty of time. Just under 14 seconds left. They did advance the ball. North Carolina has missed 10 of its last 11 shots from the floor. Deja Kelly has been their go-to all season long. Yeah, I still like putting the ball in Deja Kelly's hands. Letting her make a play. All game on the line, Usby inbounds. Here's Deja. Usby posting up. Donarski gets the pool screen, and a moving screen has been called on pool. Well, there's just enough space. Right here, Donarski not coming off tight. Just enough space for Day Wilson to try to sneak through. And the, the, the wide base on the on-ball screen, the sell by Cheyenne yeah. Day Wilson. Close call. So now Miami, just under eight seconds left to go, just having to get it in bounds. Usby with the foul. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they called the travel. A travel on Williams. So now a third opportunity for Carolina down one. Well, she absolutely did travel. Before the Usby foul. 
Will the third time be the charm for Carolina? Deja. Couldn't get the clean shot up in time. She was double teamed by Patrick and Williams, and Miami somehow survives, giving Carolina multiple choices. They win by one.